Well, hi. This is for you guys who can't have a wheel at home. So I'm going to try to give you some projects that work well for you and are kind of fun to do and give you a lot of latitude on creativity. All you need is really a flat space, preferably something that's non-porous like wood and some clay and your hands and hopefully some tools. I'm going to show you how to make a tray. We have a 10 inch plate in the official assignments, the original assignments. And so I'm going to show you how to make a platter like this out of a slab. Now they can be plain like that. They can be shaped. You can use the slab to create the handles. You can add feet to it. Here's another one with the handles and feet. And this one I rolled on a texture. And then this one is a divided tray. I'll show you how to do this too. Go for your clay. And it probably should be wedged but it doesn't have to be. Now you can use all kinds of supports. I'm going to show you how to use clay for the support. So I'm going to start with making some coils. Now normally when I'm in the studio I'll use an extruder, but you don't have access to an extruder, so let me show you how to make a coil on a flat surface, fingers straight, and you just roll the clay and then move your hands out from the center, out, and it gets longer and longer. Think about how deep you want the, your plate to be. This started out with a coil probably about an inch. This is a little bit bigger. I'm going to go a little bit further. A good thing about this is you can recycle this clay. should be enough right there. So, find the board and make your shape. Now, you could do a round plate like this. Mm, kind of boring. When you're hand building, you have options. So just take it, form it on your board. I think I could do a long one with maybe a point happening on it. Maybe a, almost rectangular. A little bit of undulation there. Okay. Now, you need a little bit of plastic. And wrap that coil. This way you'll be able to use it again. Now you could use saran wrap. You know, just food wrap. It doesn't matter. This way, that clay isn't going to dry out on you. Just 
wrap it all the way around. Now normally, if you weren't short on clay, I'd say let this firm up before doing what I'm going to show you how to do. But you don't have a lot of clay to use, so cover it up like this, and then you can use it again. Now, of course, you could add something else inside. I'm just going to make this just a simple kind of elongated tray. So that's the setup. Now you may or may not have a rolling pin at home. If you don't, not to worry. Cut off, now for a piece that size, I'm going to cut off about two inches there. I'll have clay to spare. Take your clay, flatten it out. Now you can do this on the floor, just make sure you do it on a board. So that way, it doesn't stick. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing the slab, I'm grabbing one end, lifting it up, and swing it, and then throwing it down so this end hits first, kind of sticks, and it stretches the clay. Up and stretch. And I want this slab to be about as thin as I want, as the tray is going to be. Maybe a quarter inch. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have a rolling pin, you can roll it a few times both ways. Now, if you have a texture on there, now's the time to take it off. Now, there are the official pottery tools. Just go one direction, then another. There's a small one. Harder with a small one. Also, everyone has a credit card or a gift card. So you can use that. Okay. So now, I'm going to take my slab, lay it on my form, just gently lay it down. Cut off some of that extra clay. Remember, ball it up and put it away right away so it doesn't dry out on you. Okay. Now, a couple ways you can do this. The way I like to do it is to pick it up and drop it. Let that air out. And it takes on a beautiful curved shape. I'm going to drop it on the floor. Oh, much better. Much better. Now, if you want it to go any deeper, you can take a sponge. Don't use your fingers because that'll mark it all up. Or you can take a sock and fill it. Now, traditionally, they fill it with sand. I filled this with rice. I have rice at home. So you can take this and force it into the cracks and crevices. And 
this also has the added benefit of compressing it a little bit. So now you can trim off the extra clay. Now you have the choice. You know, like I showed you before, you could leave some of this, you know, make handles on the sides like I did with these. Or trim it all the way, leave it plain. Add handles and appendages and things to it. So now just trim what you want to take off, off. And it's important that it's not wrapping all the way around, because remember it shrinks. So you may want to take a little bit higher. Another way to trim it is a cheese cutter. And the cheese cutter has a very fine wire. I, there's usually a little roller there, and I took that out. And you just can go around and follow the shape of the plate, of the form that you created. Now at this point, take a sponge, round off that top edge, you can come back inside a little bit, but just remember don't over sponge your piece because what happens is you sponge, the slip comes off onto the sponge, you're left with the grog. Unless you're using a smooth clay body, not a good idea. So what I'm going to do is let this firm up. At this point I could stamp in it. You know, there are lots of things you can do with this. You know, it's up to you to be original with this. leave it overnight, and then tomorrow I'll come back and finish this up. Thank you.